Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Tutorials. <coughs> Today, we are going to discuss a method of analysis of electrical circuits, which is called as mesh analysis. Now, before we discuss mesh analysis, now what is a mesh? Now, a mesh is a closed path or a closed loop which is formed in an electric circuit. And we apply Kirchhoff's voltage law to that closed path. And that technique is called as mesh analysis. So we apply Kirchhoff's voltage law to any closed path or closed loop which is formed in an electric circuit. Now, one restriction which is uh, present in mesh analysis is that it is applicable for planar circuits only. Now, what is a planar circuit? A planar circuit is one in which it is possible to draw the graph of that network or that circuit where the branches of the circuit do not intersect each other or do not cross cross over or under any other branch. So that is a planar circuit. So if a network has n meshes, then n simultaneous KVL equations can be formed. And those KVL equations can be solved using any method you like to find out the loop or the mesh currents. And uh, this is a, a very easy method of analysis, but only this uh, the solving of the equations, it takes a bit of a time. But nowadays, the scientific calculator is available. You can solve uh, simultaneous equations using sim uh, the scientific calculator. So here we are going to discuss about the mesh analysis. So this is a circuit. It consists of three mesh, mesh 1, mesh 2 and mesh 3, closed path, mesh 1, this is another closed path, mesh 2, this is another closed path, mesh 3. Now the mesh currents are I1, I2 and I3. They are taken in clockwise direction for, e for ease. It's, I have taken clockwise direction. You can also take anti-clockwise direction. It depends on your uh, on your wish. I have taken clockwise because it's conventional to take clockwise direction. So as you see here, A, B, F, E forms one mesh. B, C, G, F forms another mesh. C, D, H, G forms the third mesh. So now we are going to apply the KVL. So you can just apply KVL as V minus I1 R1 minus I1 minus I2 into R2. As this mesh is considered, I1 is in clockwise, this is in anticlockwise with respect to this, not anticlockwise, but as respect to this mesh, this current direction is opposite to that in the opposite direction. So we have taken I1 minus I2 into R2. We will discuss it through an example. It will be easier for you to understand here just for the sake of telling you I just told here. So let's solve a question or solve a problem to understand it in a better way. So here for uh, easier analysis I have taken two meshes. So two mesh currents I1 and I2 in clockwise direction they are flowing or I have taken in clockwise direction. It, here we have a 24 volt voltage source in uh, this left mesh in the right mesh I have a 12 volt voltage source and the resistances are 4 ohm, 2 ohm and 6 ohm. So we first apply Kirchhoff's voltage law in mesh 1. So 24 
current is flowing from positive to negative so there is going to be a negative voltage drop minus 4 I1 again I1 minus I2 I just told you it is in this direction it is in the opposite direction so I1 minus I2 into 2 if I2 would have been in this direction like this like this if I2 would have been so we have we would have written I1 plus I2 into 2 but as here this direction is opposite to the direction of flow of I1 so we write I1 minus I2 into 2 is equal to 0 so this is the, the summation of the voltage drops in a closed path is 0 that is the Kirchhoff's voltage law so we just applied it here so we simplify it we get 24 we open the bracket 24 minus 4 I1 minus 2 I1 plus 2 I2 negative negative is positive then we further simplify it 24 we add these two I1 terms minus 6 I1 plus 2 I2 is equal to 0 we further simplify it by dividing whole throughout by 2 24 by 2 is 12 6 by 2 is 3 minus 3 which is and by 2 is 1 so 12 minus 3 I1 plus I2 is equal to 0 this is one equation another equation will be formed by putting KVL in this loop so let's put it here when we apply KVL in the second mesh we get minus 6 I2 let's see minus 6 I2 minus 12 negative positive to negative that's why minus 12 6 I2 minus 12 minus 2 into I2 minus I1 see here again as we are applying it in the second mesh so I2 is taken positive as it is the reference current and as I1 is opposite is flowing in an opposite direction to I2 so I2 minus I1 in the first mesh we took I1 minus I2 as I1 was the reference current and I2 was flowing opposite to that that's why I1 minus I2 in the first mesh but here as I2 is the reference current and I1 is flowing in the opposite direction so we have taken I2 minus I1 so minus 6 I2 minus 12 minus 2 into I2 minus I1 is 0 again you simplify it it's uh, um, 2 I 1 minus 2 I 2 2 I 1 because plus minus minus is plus minus 2 I 2 minus 6 I 2 minus 12 is equal to 0 again we divide 2 on both sides we get I 1 minus 4 I 2 equals to 6 we have just taken this 12 on the right side so this forms equation 2 now these two equations are solved you can solve it by normal analysis by cancelling these terms as it is it involves only two variables so it becomes easy but there will be equations where there will be three mesh currents so that would be a little time taking to solve using normal uh, the algebraic method uh, variable cancellation method so I recommend you to use scientific calculators because it is allowed in examinations nowadays so use that uh, scientific calculator in equation mode you can solve these simultaneous equations now as we solve these uh, equations these two equations we get the values the mesh current I1 is equal to 42 by 11 ampere and the mesh current I2 is 6 by 11 ampere uh, sorry minus 6 by 11 ampere now when a current value comes as a minus it means that the direction which you assumed it's the opposite so here we have assumed that the mesh current 2 I2 direction is like this and the value came negative so actually the direction is in this way like this so whenever a current value becomes negative it means that the actual direction is opposite 
to the assumed direction. We assumed in this direction, the result came negative, so the actual direction is in this direction. So it's no problem when the current becomes negative, it's just the direction you change opposite. If it's clockwise, make it anticlockwise. If it's anticlockwise, make it clockwise. So this is a simple uh, mesh analysis technique. I explained it using two meshes in uh, uh, there will be more meshes. Uh, generally in examinations, uh, three meshes are generally involved. So three equations will be formed. You can solve it using the scientific calculators in equation mode. Similarly, three equations will be formed. Three variables will be there, I1, I2, I3 or you can take x, y, z, whatever you want. So you solve it using the scientific calculator in equation mode. Uh, as it will consume less time. So, three equations will be formed and you can solve that. So, this is the general mesh analysis technique. It is used in a lot of uh, areas in transient, in uh, RLC circuits, in uh, two port networks this uh, mesh analysis is used. So, it is just a basic principle of uh, electrical circuits which I discussed with you. So, Thank you very much. I hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel Engineering Tutorial for more such videos related to electrical and electronics engineering. Have a great day. Thank you very much.